Oh, hey. Welcome again to the Prophet to Imperfect podcast. This is episode three, uh, I hope. So today I wanted to tackle, um, it's June. I mean, it's July, not June, Jesus Christ. It's July. Uh, we're approaching my toughest month of the year. I hate August. I really hate it. And I can literally, I can already feel my brain doing that uh, preparation to hibernate thing. So, unlike Bez, I go through mental hibernation. I call it mental hibernation because I really don't like August. I hate that month. More so because that's the month my dad passed away. So, I've never really reconciled that since then. Never used to be a huge month on my calendar. So, now it's just a shitty month and I can practically feel the mental strength and uh, the emotional torment is already on its way. I can feel it. It's like, yeah, we're going into the sixth year now. So, I hate that month. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> as I'm talking about my dad and all that stuff, I had a fun topic to discuss today. We're going to talk about porn and ways to consume it. I I just need to give you a warning. This is not going to be... Um, I mean, my, my podcast itself is already age restricted. But I'm not. this is not going to be like getting explicit or naughty. I'm just going to talk about regular pornography. So I'm just going to jump right into it. So, one, first things first, I like porn. I like watching porn. I like reading and I like listening. Erotic stuff. Listening is kind of new to me, by the way. Still getting used to it. If you want to feel cringe, listen to an erotic audiobook. I kid you not. Your entire body will not be receptive to that. Uh, well, for me, that is. And I'll explain why later. So, I consume my porn in different ways. I saw across on when uh okay so fair warning if you're a family member and you're right here and you're listening to this you go ahead at your own peril do not ask me questions once this is done do not come to me and inquire and confirm about what i'm going to say today i say this because i will not be truthful with you i will lie this is the only time i'll get to say the truth so if you want to listen listen in but do not ask me later don't ask me later just fair warning to my friends to my family members to anyone who knows me and wants to find out the truth i will not tell you the truth this is the only place i will tell you the truth this is the only place i'll talk about it so i'm saying this because i do not want awkward conversations in person or in face so fair warning you go on ahead to the next rest of this listening experimental excitement conversation at your own peril fair warning so my first introduction to porn was around and i think i was like eight nine ish okay age is below 15 that's what i'm gonna be honest with i had already learned about porn by then i i don't know about you guys I mean, some people have different ways of how they stumble into porn, right? Uh, I was, I didn't stumble into it per se, but back, I was raised in a military barracks. It was the Air Force, it was right next to East B, and it was a very small community, lived there for a while, so, and I remember it was at that po- po- period in time when it was actually the situation the entire introduction to porn was happening uh i was invited by my friend to watch a movie <clears throat> it was like a very it was a very boring gloomy weekend uh my mom wasn't around my parents weren't around at that point in time I my and i was raised i was a kid who only got out to a friend's house when my parents weren't around like if i was caught out at a friend's place or outside at a wrong hour there would be shame pain so <laughs> so i was invited it was supposed to be a movie i go in and so 
how the um the military houses were because we were in uh i'll say uh the bigger houses the the mass the machinet so people had to convert like one of the guest rooms into either a tv room or a study room so we my friends chose change theirs into a tv room ours was a study room so um I remember it was me and I think four boys. Let me see, four boys my age. And as as the tape went on, I didn't know what was happening. It was one of those old vintage porn, you know, pornography videos. Uh, an old guy pretending to be a pizza delivery guy can't play dick in a box. Uh, uh, there's an old mustachey guy with a hot belly trying to hit on a young french looking girl and then you know they have sex next to the pool it's just old vintage stuff okay and i was i was so confused because i didn't know what was happening i will be honest i was not that interested in genitalia until later on i did a lot of things i've done a lot of things i won't talk, I won't talk about everything but i didn't know what was what until i watched it and at first i didn't even get what was i was i was watching it i knew it was a movie and i think <clears throat> this the sense of naivete has last has is one of the things one of my weaknesses that has led to a lot of uh, wrong decisions in my life but at that point in time i i actually appreciated it because i actually waited to watch a movie i didn't go there knowing it was something sexual or something bad to be ambiguous and not even to think about or talk about and i think that's what fascinated me and what made me so comfortable with it with the i with the co- with the conversation around sex itself so um as the porn started you know it's always a federal fbi blah 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 and then the uh, brothel type music and then the puppet and the flowers and the names and then the school scenes now the good thing about old porn is there was a story it wasn't a pu- it wasn't a good story it was a good it wasn't a solid plot but there was a story to lead you to other porn you know set up the mood and i watched the whole thing and i was absolutely unmoved i didn't feel anything because i didn't understand what movie i was watching now what made me aware that something was happening is i was the only chick seated on the floor all the guys were seated on the couch behind me like really separate like huge space in between like one was on the armrest the other one was at you know the other one was on top of the other the the the, the head of the couch and all stuff but is that how do I, how can i explain when sexual energy is inserted in a room if you're not aware of that i'm not saying there's something wrong with you you're lucky now at that age i knew there was something weird in the air but i i, I can't say i felt endangered or in in danger or something is going to harm me it was just it was one of those weird and comfortable but curious energies that I was just I just wanted to know what was going on so when I was looking around I could see the guys were just hyperventilating they looked very uncomfortable most of them had their hands over their dick I didn't know what look I felt like I I knew what a dick and a vagina was at that point no like I didn't know what they were supposed to be I just didn't know pornography existed and it the first time was very curious for me because I don't remember getting any sexual arousal I wasn't aroused to say it just got me curious about just how that can come to happen and after that it's not like I go I, I went back to watch it again no 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 it was just I got curious I got very curious about myself, got curious about everything around me, but I wasn't comfortable to experiment. And I, at that point, I was such a Catholic girl. I was like, no, no. So it was just, I would think about it. I found an interesting, uh, interesting Kenyan written pornography novel, uh, erotic novel. At that point in time, I didn't understand that erotic novels was a thing. Again, I. This is a thing we didn't I did we didn't have internet at that point in time. Our library library at school was very limited in it, in it, in its information. We didn't have like bookstores to go buy books. I didn't even travel much into the into town. I had not seen what town looked like without my mom holding my hand all the stuff. 
So I was sheltered, yes, but I was very serious. So when, <laughs> oh, God, I can't, re- I can't believe I'm actually talking about this. So when, um, so when, uh, when I got this erotic novel, I think I was in class eight. So I was around 17 years old. And at that point in time, I knew what was supposed to go where because we had had that talk. I had that talk with my mom. We had that, um, I'm going to show you how to put a condom on a big uh, phallus like um, wooden thing that people used to use to teach, uh, uh, not to teach, to instruct um, HIV and AIDS counseling sessions to show people how to use condoms. My mom was one of those uh, counselors. She did her. She did a bit of. She did a training. She went. She used to counsel like uh, HIV and AIDS patients. That was back in the nineties, like late nineties when it was a huge thing. Or like mid nineties when it was a huge thing. And I knew. I didn't know there was a female condom. That was actually quite, quite interesting. Learning about female condom later on in life. But I knew what sex was. I understand it was supposed to be penis and vagina, and you know getting into each other and all that stuff. I understand I understood sex. I understood the physical actions that come through sex and I understood why sex would happen. I had my first crush earlier on in life and I I think I was class six. So I was what? Uh I was fourteen. Fifteen. Fourteen, fifteen. That was my first crush. So I understood what uh, sexual arousal meant. I had read enough from biology classes I read ahead many years before. I had watched a couple of bit of more porn and this is something I, I would tell okay most of the okay most of the times before internet before I learned about touching your own porn and getting your own um, pirated stuff you know uh, I stumbled upon a couple of different types of porn on uh, videos, back of CDs and DVDs, um, they weren't mine, uh, some of my friends and some of my parents, which I don't feel comfortable saying now, but they had their own collection, they had their own thing, it was, good. It was healthy. I, didn't, I don't see it as a problem now, even then I didn't see it as a problem, just, you know, it's healthy to have your own type of sexual appetite and t- things that turn you on it's fine if you share with each other that's cool if you don't feel like sharing that's fine enough it's fine um but yeah so i'd seen a couple i'd watched a few i'd had my little uh, female chubby so i understood what sex was from a physical point of view it took me a while to understand the emotional burden of sexual intimacy so it was a while. It was a long while. Um, a lot of things happened in my life. I I had boyfriends. I had sexual partners. I had FWBs. I had different sexual in, sexual experiences and interactions with different people. And I learned a lot about myself. So when it came to my own personal consumption of porn, because I said actually making my own porn collection or getting to realize what is my king later on in life when internet was accessible in my own ha- in my own space like home internet so and i was like during like the most depressive time in my life so it was depression and sexual uh, awakening at the same time don't ask me how that works but it worked so i started getting my own collection i said coming to realize what was my thing and I realized I, I enjoyed watching videos videos people actually doing a thing porn actors being paid and creating scenarios that are supposed to well, I mean modern scenarios are kind of stupid they don't really get me in the mood per se like it's not giving me and I think and, and this is okay it explains why I like what I like so I I as I was be, I was sinking into a river and or, or an ocean of depression. I was getting comfortable with my sexuality. Now, I wanted to know what turned me on. Instead of having to learn it through other people, I wanted to know it from my, like 
being aware of my own sexual appetite and what I like. So I first place I jumped on was Pornhub, of course, because that's the only place I knew that had like a, a diversity of collection. But back back then, it didn't actually have that much. It had a lot of American and uh, British and Scandinavian and kind of a weird amount of Indian porn, but it didn't have African porn. And I'm, I wasn't, I'm not going to tell you I enjoy African porn. Some I do. And it took me a while to get used to it. Because to me, porn was always white people. So it, when I saw the ebony category opening up at Pornhub, I got curious. Because I was like, oh, so people like it actually. People, I can actually imagine being together because of the skin color. Don't ask me. It's not, being, it's not me being racist. It's just because I had consumed porn from an American perspective, I had not seen a black guy in a porn. I wouldn't even pretend that I had. The only the only African porn I had experienced with was that erotic novel that a friend shared with me back in primary school. I don't even remember what it was about, but it had some sex scenes. It didn't have much. I think three out of the entire novel. The novel was good. It, ex- it was trying to talk about... It was talking about this guy who moved to Nairobi and got his first job, him trying to, you know, hit on a girl, uh, survive his working environment, try to make a name for himself, try to support his, his parents and sisters. There were sex in some in there, not like three out of like, and I think that book was around uh, 300 and something pages. And that's not much. No, 400 and something. It's not a lot of pages, not a lot of words. But back then, though, I mean, I'm comparing that erotic novel and the erotic novels I read now. So, yeah. So, the reason why I don't like watching porn, per se, and it's not about the whole dark skin thing and all that stuff. Porn, watching porn is fine. Uh, I like massage. Massage category is mine because it's more sensual. I like sensual. I like sensuality and romance and sex, even if there's no meaning. Or attachment to it that right after like the whole peak and drop of it there's a huge ball of guilt that hits me and it's like post orgasmic guilt it's quite uncomfortable it is very emotional to me now it wasn't a huge deal back then to me just pushes the emotional buttons and I'll explain later but yeah so Watching porn became, especially when I was getting dep- when I was in depression, like that point of sexual awakening told you I was going through a huge, huge depressive curve, and my emotions were all over the place. And I can say that's literally where my emotional EQ was literally growing from its roots, because I had no EQ for a lot for a long time. And I mean a long time. Oh God, the things I did. But yeah. So at that point in time, watching watching pornography videos it turned out to be more depressing than exciting. It didn't give me the endorphins, the dopamine I was hoping it would. So I decided to try something else. I started going to... I remembered, I remember the erotic novel, okay? So I tried to look looking for specific erotic novels i went looking for this type of erotic novels i found a shitload of good writers and i i had i had a set of favorites i had like a i had a huge folder of around i think 2 gb or so of novels and good thing about this i'll tell you a good thing about this erotic novel they come in series now people who experience erotic novels for the first time i'm pretty sure you're the first introduction to erotic novels of the 50 shades now 50 shades of gray was okay it was an okay erotic novel i mean it was a porn parody of twilight but i had i got a couple from like the early 2000 and like the, the, the 2003 4 one and i had a favorite one favorite author that i like before i found the second one so we're gonna talk about the first one and her books her first series books that i keep going back to read and have been keeping me busy <laughs> oh gosh has been keeping me busy the past week as i was trying to get myself out of 
this depressive, depressive funk I've been feeling. So her name is Sylvia Day. Um, she's a an author, very good writer. I wouldn't oof, like my friends, my friends. If you love reading <laughs> your sex stories, Sylvia Day is a person to go to. So I've been reading her Crossfire uh, series novel now. Crossfire series novels is uh, five thir- five novels uh, following Gideon and Eva. It's it's not gonna be it's okay. So the thing is, I'm not gonna talk about something that it's amazing to me. It's not it's a something that I personally like. It's my own opinion. Some people will not look at it as as literacy gold, or they won't appreciate the cringe that comes with reading these things. But I enjoyed reading her stories because of the emotional place they put me in. And the reason why I love erotic novels, and I'm saying love in like a, they're purposeful for me. They're not just random shit I read to have, <laughs> to have an orgasm, okay? It's something I read because this is where I grew my sexual emotional portion from. This is when I understood why emotions were so dangerous when mixed with sex without a purpose and a meaning to it. And look, most of these books are kind of nice. Uh, they're like good endings. None of them has, none of them is like The Notebook or Dear John where the, main, the, the guy dies. Okay, it's not like that. Well, Notebook wasn't about, they died in old age. So Notebook was Fine. Do they get married? I don't. Do they get married in the notebook? Maybe, maybe not me about the notebook. Anyway, so now the Crossfire series has the um five books in its titles. There's bad to you. There's reflected in you. There is intertwined in you. There's captivated by you, and there's one with you. Okay, kind of gives you basically what you're going to get now. These books are good when it comes to the hot and smexy and sexy and giving you what you need when you need it. The, the sex is not sparse or in between. They're spread everywhere. Okay? He, she knows how to write and describe her story. She puts you in, this, in, this, in, this, in its place. She, and I like the fact that in the first um, three books, it's first person perspective. So you literally put yourself in Eva Tremel's shoes. I like that perspective. I enjoyed it tremendously. I love how she described or tried to explain the sexual intensity and the sexual connection between Gideon and Eva. There was a purpose to it. Now, Gideon is a typical, and this is. Now, uh, this is something you have to understand about adult erotic novels. The guy is almost, it's like, it's like telenovelas. So, um, Gideon is a typical broody, rich, sexy, white man, hot and sexy. He exudes sex. Like, literally, their introduction in the first book, like, can I even, can, let me find it so I can read. The literal description from Eva's mouth about what, <laughs> how she described, how she described um, her meeting with Gideon. So she was. Uh, so it starts off. Eva is she's a socialite. She's a proper socialite. She was she was born to rich parents. She's been raised in comfort and luxury, but there's been trouble in her life before. She doesn't need money, so the aspect of them, there being stories about her being a gold digger is non-existent. I mean, some people will think so, but no. Um, so her first day, she's, she's moved to New York from uh, Southern California. She was living with her dad there while she was attending uni. Um, her parents were separated. Her mom had married a rich guy. Her dad is a cop. She, she lived with her dad four years only. She spent most of her life with her mom. Her mom was married three times. And in one of her first, in her first relationship, she was sexually abused by a stepbrother. That's so, yeah. And Gideon, on the other hand, 
his problem is his dad was rich right his dad started a ponzi scheme got rich when everything got discovered he committed suicide now after his suicide when his son was around nine i think when Gideon was around nine um the mom married someone else and while she was starting her new family because she felt his Gideon felt that from a young age that he didn't belong he became a trouble kid and he had anger issues so his mom tried to have him go through therapy but apparently it turned out his therapist both therapists because he had two who were brother and sister were both abusive in different ways but the one the brother the guy the, 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 the male therapist abused him while he was young sexually abused him and made him into a cold turkey like he had an enormous ginormous sexual appetite but he didn't have a healthy way to have it um satiated so he didn't create he, he didn't have a very good social um environment around him. his idea of sex was sex with no attachment so he he was rich um he he, he tried to he worked very hard to make sure the cross name which his dad destroyed by committing suicide without even fixing the ponzi scheme thing um was not tainted again so he was rich he was ultra rich he, he was mega rich he owned like half of new york according to the book so their first meeting happens when eva moves to new york to work for this new um, ad agency um eva is living with her best friend carrie Ka- Harry, I don't know how to say this name. Kari, he's a guy. He's bisexual. He's ha- he's gonna have problems with both chicks and guys. Trust me. Um, what else? Um, so she she's forced to accept her stepdad's generosity by paying for her rent in one of those really expensive side of New York because of security due to the stepbrother's abuse. Stepbrother was still around. So to protect her her mom became kind of neurotic about it so there was what a huge thing about this crossfire series is the 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 the, 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 uh, the topic of abuse the uh, the topic of psychology and therapy and counseling the topic of healthy sexual a uh, relationship in intimate relationships the idea of intimate connection that goes beyond just the physical becomes a need there's a lot of talk about needing and wanting and all that stuff it's just intense and intense in a good way for me because i like porn with a story and that's my thing the reason why i don't enjoy watching pornography as much is because it's very hard to give a good story about sex and not have it tampered down by ratings and moral ambiguities and all stuff i like reading it and in, in reading most of this um, erotic authors are very free and they they really dive into it and i enjoyed her, her writing i really dude if you really want to have if you want to try it out for the first time it's really good for both because it does get to a point where her conversation becomes first person from the guy's point of view so it's really good for anyone who wants to explore a different kind of pornographic entertainment that's what you would say such a niche group I, I know anyway so first how they meet is quite interesting so eva from her fifth avenue apartment that she enjoys but feels guilty in living in uh decides to time her walking so she takes a walk from her apartment in her in her workout clothes to the crossfire building that's where i mean Jesus, like so obvious. She goes to the crossfire building where her business is located. Her what employment is located at the top floor. Takes that walk, gets at the front of the building, knows the Bentley SUV parked at, outside. She just looks, looks, stops, off and looks above and it, in, enjoys her view. Walks into the lobby, tries to get to her office, and she turns into like, ah, good, I can make this. I can do this every day. I can do this one. Like I can get a cab once in a while because getting cab in new york is, is uh, expensive but i can do this every day so on her way back she stumbles onto 
a, a woman who kind of topples over her bag so she decides to help by picking up things and as she's kneeling to pick up the last coin she sees an expensive set of you know office shoes office leather shoes she does that pan up thing and describes what she's viewing and um i think can i let me see if i can find it so i can read it because i can't i can't describe it as well as she did oh here, here we go so this is this is hard describing this entire scene so basically what you're listening to is a less sexy voice of eva Tramel. i was walking toward the bank of elevators when a svelte beautifully groomed brunette caught her pass on a turnstile and appended it feeling a deluge of change coins drained onto the marble and rolled merrily away and i watched people dodge the chaos and keep going as if they didn't see it i winced in sympathy and crouched to help the woman collect her money as did one of the guards thank you she said shooting me a quick hurried smile i smiled back no problem i've been there I just squatted to reach a nickel lying near the entrance when I ran into a pair of luxurious black oxfords draped in tailored black slacks. I waited and beat for the man to move out of my way, and when he didn't, I arced my neck back to allow my line of sight to rise. The custom three-piece suit hit more than a few of my hot buttons, but it was a tall, powerfully lean body inside it that made it sensational. Still, as hot as all that magnificent maleness was, it wasn't until I reached the man's face that I just I went down for the count. Wow. Just wow. He sank into an elegant crouch directly in front of me. Hit with all that exquisite masculinity at eye level, I could only stare. Stunned. Then something shifted in the air between us. As he stared back, he altered. As if I shield speed away from his eyes, revealing a scorching force of will that sucked the air from my lungs. The intense magnetism he exuded grew in strength, becoming a near tangible expression of vibrant and unrelenting power. Reacting purely on instinct, I shifted backwards and sprawled flat on my ass. My elbows throbbed from the violent contact with the marble floor, but I scarcely registered the pain. I was too preoccupied with staring, riveted by the man in front of me. Inky black hair framed a breathtaking face. His bone structure would make a sculptor weep with joy, while a firmly etched mouth, a blade of a nose, and intensely blue eyes made him savagely gorgeous. Those eyes narrowed slightly. His features otherwise schooled into impassivity. His dress shirt and suit were both black, but his tie perfectly matched those brill- brilliant irises. His eyes were shrewd and assessing, and they bored into me. My heart break- my heartbeat quickened, my lips parted to accommodate fast breaths. He smelled sinfully good not cologne body wash maybe or shampoo whatever it was it was mouth watering as was he he held out a hand to me exposing onyx cufflinks and a very expensive looking watch with a shaky inhalation i placed my hand in his my pulse lipped <laughs> oh jeez make me blush jesus my pulse lipped when his grip tightened his touch was electric, sending a shock up my arm that raised their hairs on my nape. He didn't move for a moment, a frown line marrying the space between arrogantly slashed brows. Are you alright? His voice was cultured and smooth with a rasp that made my stomach flutter. <laughs> it... <laughs> Sorry. Ah, goddamn. Okay. You brought sex to mind, extraordinary sex. I thought for a moment that he might. <laughs> uh, okay, ah, uh, Jesus, I need to stop flashing. Back to serious face, serious face, okay. I thought for a moment that he might be able to make me orgasm. <laughs> I can't read this with a straight right face, oh my god. Ooh. Okay. I thought for a moment that he might be able to make me orgasm, but just taking long enough. <laughs> By talking long enough. My lips were dry, so I licked them before answering. I'm fine. He stood with economical grace, pulling me up with him. We maintained eye contact because I was unable to look away. He was younger than I'd assumed at first. Younger than 30 would be my guess, but his eyes were much wildlier. Wildlier, sorry. 
hard and sharply intelligent. I felt drawn to him as if a rope bound my waist and he was slowly, inexorably pulling it. So yeah, so that was their first meeting. Now, from Gideon's perspective, on the other hand, he saw her when she got to the crossfire log, um, building. He was in the Bentley outside and his first thought was when she was looking up was how amazing she would look when she was looking up at him. So, all I can guarantee is when you reach this scene, there's going to be gratuitous sex everywhere. The, na- the words cunt and fuck and cock and cum and all that stuff will be in there. Is it beautifully written? Um, in some ways, yes. It is total cringe, to be honest. Given the fact that I couldn't even do this with a straight face. It's a good book. It's a good series. It's a, it's a, it's a good series. It's, it has a good amount of cringe in it. There's a good amount of um, drama in there. There's a lot of very healthy conversations about sex. And therapy okay the therapy sessions aren't really paid much attention we're only brought to the attention that most of these characters go through therapy god Gideon despite his um, child trauma goes to therapy to to appease Eva and because she he loves Eva he decides to try out therapy individual therapy and couple therapy Eva on the other hand has been in therapy constantly since her, her child abuse um, was discovered and her mom is in therapy because of his neuroticism. Kari met Eva during group therapy sessions while they were teenagers and they, made, they created a friendship and relationship because of what they went through. Um, there's a therapist who's an abuser in there. There's a therapist who's... It's just like the relationship between sex, uh, love and the, the therapy in between. It's not... It's not like we dove into it's it is implied and it does it shows need for mental wellness in there i loved it i loved how it showed that broke two broken people can come together and have their own thing without having to be worried about what people think about them it's just how that relationship is built and built healthy because they are aware of their trauma and they are aware of they need to fight for their relationship for it to be healthy in order for them to have a happy life. It's quite interesting when you... When I take Fifty Shades of Grey and I try to describe Christian Grey from this perspective, um, is Christian Grey abusive? In some sense, yeah. It's just how the writer decided to, dis- to put the opposite sex against Christian Grey because Christian Grey is a rich guy right rich guy who has the bondage and uh, sadomasochism in him right he was abused as a child it's kind of flimsy the black backstory is not well fleshed out I think that's one of the reasons the difference between now Sylvia Day and one of my other favorite writers Sylvia and Renaud is that they dig deeper into the backstory into the individual showing you the individual characters now, with Gideon, Gideon is aware that he is traumatized. He's aware he's not a good guy. He's aware therapy, he hates therapy. He was literally abused during therapy sessions as a young kid. And when he told his parents, his parents don't believe him. He has a brother who's a dick. He has a small sister who's never had time to spend with him. And he feels like he's lost time with it. He hates his mom but loves her at the same time. So she can't, he can't ignore him. And he doesn't hate his stepfather, so he supports and keeps them comfortable so that he can have a comfortable life without being in their life. Get that? He know he's aware of his problems. He knows he's not a healthy guy to have a relationship with. Even when he approaches um, when he approaches Eva to have sex with her the first time, he knows it's different, but he still goes to his um, default setting because he knows sexual gratification would be one of his um his methods of relaxing from his past job but he wanted it with eva and the idea that not having eva in his life is what changes him and oh even on the other hand she's healthy like she's healthy mentally she's aware of also her trauma she also has a lot of triggers 
that she has to work with. And there's this dynamic that Sylvia Day brings in in the Crossfire novel that I find personally very interesting because it's something I'm positively into is the idea of willing submission and willing domination. Now, once I say those words, someone's going to jump in here and be like, oh, that's BDSM, blah, blah, blah. There is some aspect, BDSM is for different categories. Okay, it's like two pairs of two things that can work together or separate. You get what I mean? There's BDSM for bondage, right? B for bondage, D for domination, okay? There's domination in bonding someone. And there's, the, Gideon, Gideon is one of those people who would, who enjoys bonding one himself to someone else. So he is the ideas of ropes and cuffs have appeared that they're not really used to it because according to this Eva was doesn't like being found together but every time they use one of those uh, toys it portrays the amount of trust Eva has or is giving up to Gideon in order to allow him to be dominating because he loves dominating over someone else and he enjoys dominating over Eva sexually, even to like their banter. But the thing is, with Sylvia Day's story, there's a huge difference between Anastasia and Eva. Eva is a strong woman. Eva is smart, she's strong-willed, she's stubborn, and she knows what she wants. And she's aware of her trauma and aware of Gideon's trauma, and she doesn't like bullshit. She loves, she enjoys, she loves the idea of honesty. And it's quite interesting to see how the relationship grows it gets more intense and the sex gets more intense and there's, there's there's that notion of codependence between those two they're codependent in each other and sex is a huge factor and people are going to be some people like in the book itself it, it seems unhealthy even from the author's point of view as she's writing it she's trying to portray it as there is something unhealthy in how the sexual interaction um is so ingrained in their everyday life but they also show you from their perspective how it is necessary and needed between those two because of how badly damaged they are their connection is from skin to skin and i I remember i'm not gonna go further into the story there's like so much the dickish uh there's also jealousy issues and how to handle them the drama in there it's fun to read it's really fun to read i'm in the fourth book now almost through with it i literally gorged through it like because i was binge in i was binge eating porn because i (laughs) yeah i won't explain why i think you guys can understand the weather the weather can explain to you better than i can um other than that so the reason why i brought up the conversation modes of consuming porn and why it's necessary in our lives let's say it was necessary, it's necessary in my life um is just the difference between porn videos and reading about porn so if you're ever interested or you want to try out a an erotic novel erotic is everywhere now um so there's literally a porn site that offers erotic novels go uh, visit bella's Belsea.com. I'm pretty sure you already know what that is. So either way, just to end this on time and not to uh, keep dragging this story on, all I'm saying is erotic novels are fun to read. If you're ever in search for anything, especially to start with, I will suggest getting yourself the Sylvia Day Crossfire series. Those are five books, like I said, bad to you. Uh, intertwined with you, captivated by you, reflected in you, and the one with you. You're going to enjoy it. If you want to try someone else, you can try Sylvia and Renard's Gabriel's Inferno series. There's a movie. This one has a movie out. If you enjoy watching it instead of um, reading it, you can watch it. You can find it on Passion Flix. But I enjoyed reading the four, was it four books? Uh, Gabriel's Inferno. Gabriel's there's five books actually because Gabriel's promise was in there. Yeah. Um listening to the audiobooks is also quite um, interesting. I enjoyed it but felt the cringe way stronger, especially from someone else's 
um, voice and accent and then bringing out the words. Oh God, it's just, it's so cringe. Either way, um, porn is good. Porn is healthy. You just need to do it with a healthy uh, purpose. Okay, you need to do it with a healthy thought in mind. As long as you're watching it and you're not harming anyone, you're not being a freaking pedophile from any age, whatever whatever you enjoy. Um, what I'm saying is, reading porn is way fun than watching porn. Um, there's no guilty feeling after, not for me though. Um, yeah, so porn is good. Read your porn too. Uh, I do enjoy some porn mangas out there. It's like a whole, I'm a Fujoshi, so it's like the whole yoi genre that I enjoy. And there are like good head me sis uh, comics out there, it's like Western comics and porn too. So if you're ever interested, you know, hit me up. Let me know. I will, I will be your guide. I will guide you to um, good, fun sex topics. <laughs> Either way, uh, this is fun. Um, I hope you enjoy this. If you do, let me know. If you don't, let me know. If there's something specific you want to tackle, you want to talk about that. I want to be that African chick who can talk about sex and be comfortable with it and don't give a damn about what other people think about it. So just thinking it, I might as well do it. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, guys, for listening. And always be perfectly imperfect. Yeah, bye, guys.